Hello, in this video we're going to go over moles in chemical equations. So previously we talked about uh, coefficients in front of each of our molecules in a reaction. And those are going to represent the numbers of molecules or formula units that are reacting with each other. And remember, formula units refers to ionic compounds. Now we can also interpret those coefficients as molar amounts instead of individual molecules. So down below we have the reaction between sodium and chlorine and we need two sodium atoms to react with one chlorine molecule to produce two formula units of sodium chloride. But another way that we could say this is two moles of sodium react with one mole of chlorine to produce two moles of sodium chloride. Now we can use those molar ratios as conversion factors. So for example, we could look at the ratio of sodium to chlorine and that would be two to one. So there are two moles of sodium for every one mole of chlorine. And then we could use that ratio as a conversion factor in dimensional analysis. So let's say we're trying to solve for moles of sodium and we're trying to get rid of moles of chlorine. Now we can do that for any combination in this equation. So maybe we're solving for sodium, but we're trying to get rid of sodium chloride. There's a two to two ratio between those. Or maybe we're solving for chlorine and trying to get rid of sodium chloride. That's a one to two ratio. And of course we can always flip that conversion factor if we need to depending on what we're solving for. So let's do an example. Let's say we're trying to figure out how many moles of Cl2 react with sodium to produce 5.8 moles, oops, moles of sodium chloride. So it looks like we're solving for moles of chlorine and we're given moles of sodium chloride. So that's what we're eventually going to cancel out or get rid of. So let's figure out which conversion factor we need. So we're just focused on chlorine and sodium chloride. And on the last slide, we saw that there was a ratio of one mole of Cl2 for every two moles of NaCl. So that will be our conversion factor. So again, just like in previous problems, we're going to start with what we're given. So we're given 5.8 moles of sodium chloride, and then we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor. So we're solving for chlorine, so that will go in the top, and we're going to try to get rid of sodium chloride which is what we were given, so we'll put that in the denominator. And again, that one to two ratio is just coming from the coefficients here in front of the two molecules we're interested in. All right, so all we need to do is cancel the units that we're trying to cancel, which is moles of sodium chloride, and then let's simplify the math. So in the numerator, we're multiplying 5.8 by 1, so that's just 5.8. And then we're dividing by 2, 
and our unit will be moles of chlorine, Cl2. So this should give us 2.9 moles of Cl2. So looking at the original question, we were asked how many moles of chlorine react with sodium to produce 5.8 moles of sodium chloride. So the answer here is 2.9 moles of chlorine will need to react. Now notice that we didn't use sodium at all. So maybe there's just a bunch of sodium ready to be used and we just need to figure out how much chlorine we need to get a specific amount of sodium chloride. Now in terms of sig figs, it looks like we were given two sig figs in our problem. And we wanna make sure our answer represents that or reflects that. So we do have two sig figs in our answer, so we are good to go. Okay, let's look at another problem. And this time we'll look at a slightly different reaction. So consider the reaction below. And it looks like down below we have nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of NH3, which is also called ammonia. And ammonia is a really strong base or cleaning agent. Uh, you always want to wear gloves if you're going to use ammonia. So we're asked how many moles of hydrogen react with nitrogen to produce 14.3 moles of ammonia. So see if you can figure out what you're given, what you're solving for, uh, and then write the conversion factor that you need and see if you can figure out how many moles of hydrogen you need. Okay, so looks like we're solving for moles of hydrogen. and we're given 14.3 moles of ammonia. Now we're ignoring nitrogen here because we're not really given any information about nitrogen. So we can just assume that we have a ton of nitrogen to react with. Okay, let's figure out our conversion factor. So we're really just focused on the three moles of hydrogen and the two moles of ammonia. So that is our basic ratio between these two molecules. Now, since we're solving for moles of hydrogen, we want that to go on the top. And then in the bottom of our conversion factor, in the denominator, we'll write two moles of NH3. So that's our conversion factor. All right, so now let's write what we're given. 14.3 moles of NH3, and then we'll multiply that by our conversion factor. Okay, so we're canceling moles of NH3. So our final unit will be what we want, which is moles of hydrogen. And if we plug this into our calculator, uh, we'll get 14.3 times three over two. And that should give us 21.4 moles of hydrogen. Now let's double check our significant figures. So our given value had three sig figs up here. And so our final value should also have three sig figs. And it looks like it does, so that is good. Okay. 
So now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add a step onto this process. So we just learned how to convert moles of one substance into moles of another substance. And we did that by using the mole ratio as a conversion factor. And that mole ratio came from our balanced chemical equation, uh, the coefficients. So now, what if we want to figure out the mass of what we're solving for? Well, we can convert from moles to grams using molar mass. All right, so let's look at a practice problem and we'll go over this one together. So let's say a chemist has 8.3 moles of chlorine. How many grams of sodium can react with that amount of chlorine? And we're told that the molar mass of sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. So we're using the same reaction that we saw earlier between sodium and chlorine to produce sodium chloride. So again, our coefficients are two to one to two. All right, so let's see, we're given 8.3 moles of chlorine and we're solving for grams of sodium. Now, according to that flow chart that we saw on the last slide, we need to convert uh, moles of chlorine or Cl2 into moles of sodium. And then we can convert moles of sodium into grams of sodium. And we were given the molar mass so we can uh, do that pretty easily. And I'll just rewrite the flow chart up here. So we're starting with moles of Cl2 and then converting to moles of sodium. And we're going to use the mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation. And then finally, we're going to convert moles of sodium into grams of sodium using the molar mass, which I'll just abbreviate as MM. So let's start with step one. Let's convert moles of chlorine into moles of sodium. So let's start with what we were given, which is 8.3 moles of chlorine. And now we need a conversion factor. So we're really just interested in sodium and chlorine. We weren't given any information about sodium chloride. We weren't asked about it, so we can just ignore it for now. Now, since we're solving for sodium, we'll put two moles of sodium in the numerator and one mole of chlorine in the denominator. And again, those numbers are just coming from the coefficients in our balanced equation. All right, so let's plug in our conversion factor, two moles of sodium over one mole of chlorine. So we're canceling the unit of moles of chlorine. And the math is super easy. We're just multiplying 8.30 by two. So that should give us 16.6 .6 moles of sodium. Okay, so we just completed step one in our flow chart up above. Now let's go on to step two. So we're going to start with our moles of sodium that we just calculated, 16.6 .6 moles. And we're going to use the conversion factor, the molar mass, to go from moles of sodium to grams of sodium. So in our conversion factor, what should go in the numerator or on the top? 
Should we put grams on the top or moles on the top? Grams, right? Because we want to convert to grams. That's what we're solving for in this step. And then we'll divide by one mole of sodium. Okay, so moles of sodium cancel and we'll be left with grams of sodium, which is exactly what we want. And in this particular calculation, we're multiplying 16.6 by 22.99. And, oops, I skipped a slide here. So my calculator gave me 382 grams of sodium. Now, looking at our significant figures, all we're doing is multiplication and division, so we care about the least amount of significant figures. And it looks like the least amount that we had was uh, three in our given value. So my answer is limited to three significant figures. Now, 382 grams of sodium is a lot. Um, but that's how many grams we would need in order to react completely with 8.3 moles of chlorine. So this is one way that chemists can figure out uh, how much of each reactant they need in order to proceed with a reaction. Okay, let's do another one, and this time I'll let you try it on your own. Now we're looking at a slightly different reaction here. We have C2H4 gas reacting with three moles of oxygen gas. And this is producing two moles of carbon dioxide gas and two moles of water as a gas, which would be steam. So uh, what type of reaction do we have here? Well, we're producing CO2 and H2O, so that tells us we have a combustion reaction. All right, so up above it says that a chemist starts with 15 moles of C2H4. How many grams of CO2 will form? And then we're also told the molar mass of C2H4 and the molar mass of CO2 although you might not need all of that information. So see if you can figure out uh, this problem and then we'll go over it together. All right, so it looks like we're given 15 moles of C2H4. And we're trying to solve for grams of CO2. So let's write out a little flow chart for what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, we're starting with moles of C2H4. And remember, in order to get to grams of another substance, we have to convert to moles first, just like in the flow chart we saw earlier. So we're going to convert moles of C2H4 to moles of what we want, which is CO2, first. And we'll use the mole ratios in our balanced equation down below. And then once we have moles of CO2, we can convert that to grams of CO2. And we'll use the molar mass. Okay, so let's do step one first. So step one, we're going to convert between moles of C2H4 and moles of CO2. So let's figure out our conversion factor. So I'm just going to focus on the two molecules I was asked about, and we can just ignore oxygen and water. We can assume we have plenty of that and we don't have to worry about it. 
All right. So since we're starting with 15 moles of C2H4, in our conversion factor, uh, we want to make sure that we're getting rid of moles of C2H4. So looking at our equation, it looks like the ratio is 1 to 2 for C2H4 and CO2. So we'll put one mole of C2H4 in the denominator, and then we're solving for CO2. So we'll put two moles of CO2 in the numerator. Okay, so let's cancel moles of C2H4. And it looks like all we're doing here is multiplying 15 by 2, which will give us 30.0 moles of CO2. And I'm trying to keep the right number of sig figs here, so we'll keep it to three sig figs for now. And now that we have moles of CO2, we can go on to step two and convert that to grams. So I'm just going to carry 30 moles of CO2 into my second calculation. And we said that we need the molar mass to convert between moles and grams. Um, it looks like we were given the molar mass of CO2 up above, and it's 44.01 grams per mole. Now, since we're solving for grams, we're going to put that in the numerator. And we'll put one mole of CO2 in the denominator. So moles of CO2 will cancel, and that will leave us with grams of CO2. And it looks like we're multiplying 30 times 44.01. So we should get a pretty large number again. And when I plugged this into my calculator, um, I had to round it to make sure that I had three sig figs. So I ended up with 1,320 grams of CO2. And again, that will be three sig figs because I don't have a decimal at the end of the number. So that zero on the end is just a placeholder or trailing zero. Now, again, just kind of looking at all of this, um, if we take a step back, this is really similar to our example of a recipe. So if we imagine that we're mixing flour and sugar and maybe eggs, uh, maybe instead of C2H4, maybe that's one egg, and we're trying to make two cupcakes instead of CO2. So we're really just looking at ratios in a recipe and trying to figure out how much of something we need. Okay, so let's do one more addition to our flow chart. Now, typically, uh, we're not given moles of something to start because we don't have a great way to measure moles. Typically, we're given uh, grams of a substance in the beginning, and then we have to convert that all the way to grams of something else. But in order to get there, we can't go directly, right? We have to go to moles of the first substance and then convert that into moles of the substance we're interested in. And then finally, we can convert that to grams of the final substance. So if you're given grams of one substance, we're going to convert that to moles by using that substance is molar mass. Then we're going to do just what we were doing before. We're going to convert moles of the first substance to moles of our second substance using the mole ratio from the balanced equation. And then finally, we'll convert that into grams of the second substance using molar mass of that second substance. 
So let's do one together. How many grams of sodium chloride are produced from 40.2 grams of sodium? And down below, we're just using that same reaction between sodium and chlorine to create sodium chloride. And then we're also told the molar mass of sodium chloride and the molar mass of sodium. Okay, so let's figure out what we were given and what we're solving for. So it looks like we're solving for grams of sodium chloride. So that's sort of our substance B in our flow chart, right? And then we're given 40.2 grams of sodium. So that's what we're starting with, that's substance A. So let's write out a flow chart for this process. So we're starting with grams of sodium. So we need to convert that to moles of sodium. And we'll use the mole, uh, molar mass of sodium there. And then we're going to convert moles of sodium to moles of sodium chloride. And we're going to use the mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation, just like we have been before. And then finally, we'll convert moles of sodium chloride to grams. And we'll use the uh, molar mass of sodium chloride. Okay, so let's split this up into steps. Now, you could just go all the way through. You don't have to split this flow chart up into steps. You could just multiply one conversion factor after another if you would like. But since we're just starting out and just learning how to do this, uh, let's do it step by step. So let's start with the first step. We're going to start with our 40.2 grams of sodium and we need to convert that into moles. So let's use the molar mass of sodium, which is 22.99 grams per one mole. And what would go in the numerator here of our conversion factor? Would we put grams in the numerator or moles in the numerator? Moles. That's what we're solving for. So we'll put 22.99 grams of sodium in the denominator. And let's make sure our units cancel. So in this step, we're going to divide 40.2 by 22.99. And my calculator gives me 1.75 moles of sodium. Perfect, okay, so let's carry that into our second step. And in this step, we're going to convert moles of sodium into moles of sodium chloride. So looking at our balanced equation, we're only interested in sodium and sodium chloride. So it looks like the ratio between the two is equal. It's two to two. So essentially one to one, right? All right, now what should go in the numerator? Moles of sodium chloride or moles of sodium? moles of sodium chloride because we want to solve for sodium chloride. Oh, uh, two moles of sodium will go in the denominator. I almost wrote one. Okay, so let's cancel our units. And these twos will cancel as well. They're just going to cancel each other out. So really we get the same amount back. We get 1.75 moles of sodium chloride. 
Awesome. Okay, so now we can do the last step. We're just going to convert moles of sodium chloride to grams of sodium chloride. So we're going to use the molar mass of sodium chloride as our conversion factor. Okay, so in this conversion factor, do we want grams in the numerator or moles in the numerator? Grams, right? Because that's what we are solving for. So we're multiplying 1.75. Uh, by 58.44 and our units cancel and our final answer should have three significant figures so I got 102 grams of sodium chloride and again I made sure I had three sig figs since we were given uh, three sig figs in the beginning, and I wanted to limit my answer to the least amount of sig figs. All right, so let's do a practice problem, and I'll let you try this one. So going back to our reaction between C2H4 and oxygen to produce CO2 and H2O. How many grams of C2H4 are needed to produce 56.7 grams of CO2. And again, you're given the molar masses for each. Um, see if you can solve this one on your own. You can make a flow chart if that helps, and then we'll go over it together. Okay. So it looks like we're solving for grams of C2H4. And we're given 56.7 grams of CO2. So if we write out our flow chart, we're going to start with grams of CO2. And remember, we always have to convert to moles before we can do anything else. So we'll use the uh, molar mass to do that. And then we can get to moles of what we're solving for, which is C2H4. And we'll use the mole ratio for that middle step. And then finally, we're going to convert moles of C2H4 into grams. And we'll use the molar mass of C2H4. All right, so again, you can do this all uh, in one go. You could multiply all the conversion factors together if you need or want to. Um, I'm just going to split it up into steps again. So step one, we're going to start with 56.7 grams of CO2. And just like we saw before, we're actually going to divide by the molar mass of CO2. So the mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams. So we'll put one mole in the numerator. So grams of CO2 will cancel. And it looks like we're dividing 56.7 by 44.01. And when I plugged that into my calculator, I got one point, <clears throat> excuse me, 1.29 moles of CO2. So I'm going to carry that into my second step. Now in this step, we're converting moles of CO2 into moles of C2H4. So my conversion factor, I'm just focused on these two molecules. And it looks like there's a ratio of 1 to 2. And since I'm solving for C2H4, I'm going to put one mole 
of C2H4 in the numerator and then two moles of CO2 in the denominator. So moles of CO2 will cancel, and we're dividing 1.29 by 2. So we get 0.644. All right, so now the last step, we're just going to convert 0.644 moles of C2H4 into grams. So we need the molar mass, which is 28.06. Now this time we're going to multiply by the molar mass. So 28.06 grams will go in the numerator and one mole will go in the denominator. So our units cancel, and we're multiplying 0.644 by 28.06. Now it looks like we want to limit our final answer to three sig figs. So what I got was 18.1 grams of C2H4. So we've got uh, three sig figs due to the three sig figs in our given value. Okay, so I know this was a bit of a longer video, but I did want to walk through that entire flow chart and give you plenty of examples and practice. I'll also post worksheets to help practice with uh, this material. Um, on tests or quizzes, I usually try to break up these types of problems into steps, just like I did here. Um, so I might ask you to first um, convert from moles to moles, moles to grams, etc. Um, so it'll be broken up a little bit more on a quiz or an exam. But in the last video for Chapter 6, we'll go over what are called limiting reactants. And then we'll calculate what's called a percent yield for a reaction. So I'll see you then.